is something that I've been asked many times over the years about. My 12 volt setup. How do I power my fridge, my LED lights, and in particular, my 12 volt travel buddy that draws 10 amps on average per hour. You know, I'm, I'm running a 75 litre dual zone fridge. It's on 24 hours a day. One compartment is running the freezer, the other one's running the fridge. So how do I power all that? Obviously, I'm not running it off my car battery because uh, that will kill that battery straight away. So of course we use deep cycle batteries. Now I'm going to run through my setup that I built probably, I'd say it'd be nearly five years ago I built this setup. Six, seven years ago I think it might have been now, when I got into touring vehicle setup with your fridges etc. And I wanted to run a dual battery system in the vehicle. I knew absolutely nothing about 12 volt systems. I didn't know a thing. So I went and bought one of these all-in-one units that's got the AGM batteries built in. It's got the cigarette lighter plugs, etc. and all that. It had 110 amp hours in it. Well, not long after I bought that, and mind you, that thing was a small fortune too. That cost quite a lot of money. It was an Easter long weekend, and I was so keen, eager to get away. And I went away to a remote, remote area to go camping. And I got there, and then within six, seven hours after arriving at camp, I go check my fridge, the freezer, and it was warm. And I looked at the battery, it was showing something like 12.2 volts. So some other camper gave me a loan of the generator, and we ran on the generator for quite some time, and it wouldn't charge. So I had to pack up early the next day and head back home. So then I thought, I'll go and research about 12 volt systems. But I went and purchased books, online books. I did Google searches. I went to Facebook group sites, 12 volt, you know, four drive systems and asked questions there. And eventually then I drew up a diagram and I did my research as well. And I knew at the time that lithiums was coming out and I wanted to build a system that was future proof. And I built my own system. And that's what I want to show you today. Now I've never showed anyone before, because quite frankly I wasn't really, not really proud of the workmanship, but I kind of went to the same principle of what that battery box was. So it's a box, batteries inside, and then your plugs and so on, all that. So I went to that principle, so I built up a simple timber box out of plywood, varnished it, put the battery in it and it basically straps down or bolts down to the vehicle and I can move it around if I want to move it to the back on top of my jaw system I moved at the back and strapped it or bolted it to the side there well most of the time I keep it behind on the floor behind the passenger seat and that's where it's been basically most of the time for the past four years now at the time I went and purchased an AGM battery from Kickass. So it's a 120 amp Kickass AGM battery. And it's a great battery. It's really good. But it's getting on a bit a bit in age. You might have seen a buck from Mr. Buckaroonie's YouTube channel of late. It's actually talking about this, how his Kickass battery is but getting on a bit of age. And his was starting to play up a bit. Mine's not playing up yet. But it's getting to the stage where I seriously need to consider and plus it's getting it's too heavy now that I've got some additional components particularly the the fire pit it's got a bit of weight in it so I want to lose some weight elsewhere so I can get a bit more luxury items in my vehicle and take that fire pit with me basically nearly everywhere I go 
So it's almost time now to start looking into lithiums. So we're going to do film a bit of a series this year on the lithium batteries, the 12 volt systems and so on. Now I just want a simple setup. I've gone online and I've seen I've seen what you guys have done, how pretty they are, neat and everything. You can't see the wires and all that. That's all fine and good. And I thought it's time maybe to consider, seriously consider going to lithium. I'm, I'm looking around. There's a few different options. A, one that's called, I think it's a DCS. Another mob is the iTech. There's another one I'm considering is the AllSpark. And there's one more, a new one that's just come out that I've noticed. And a drive are known to be good gear. In fact, one of the components I've got in here that I'm about to show you, my battery system, is an Enerdrive product and it's a battery monitor. And it's wonderful, it's terrific. And of course it's lithium compatible as well, which is a huge benefit. But Drift has come out with this battery I saw last time I was down. I didn't, I didn't realize, I wasn't aware that Drifter had, a, had these um, budget lithium batteries. I mean, they've got the Safari brands, which from all word going around, they're wonderful battery. But guys, I just cannot justify for myself with all I want to power, invest in that sort of money in the battery. The, the safaris are very expensive. But Enerdrive has come out with a budget line of batteries, which doesn't mean the quality has suffered. What it means is a lot of the features have been taken out, such as your battery Bluetooth battery monitoring, etc. I don't need it because I've got this Enerdrive battery monitoring system that I'm going to show you that'll give me all that info that those internal battery Bluetooth monitoring thing. Now it's not Bluetooth, so I can't connect it to my phone, but that's no big deal. It's got a big screen, a huge screen. I'll just glance at it and it'll tell, tell me what the state of charge of that battery is and what the voltage is what the amps are drawing out as well, or what the amps are coming into that battery as well. It'll give me all that information. And it's a graph, I can go back through the, the menu and go to the graph and it'll show me how many times that battery's been charged, discharged, how many amp hours has been put into it, the maximum it's been discharged, etc. So it's a great, great unit. So it's got all that info there. So for me, so it's a battery I'm seriously gonna consider. Now, even it's a budget line, obviously the lithiums are still very expensive. So I cannot afford one at this stage. So I'm hopeful that this battery, AGM battery I've got in my vehicle will last me at least the next, I don't know, as long as possible. But for you guys out there that's been asking for quite some time what my battery systems and so on looks like, now to be honest, I've never really shown anyone because it's, I've seen, like I said before, I've seen all the work that everyone else has done <laughs> and done um, <laughs> on their 12 volt system. And I've seen some jobs that are done that I thought looks better than mine. And these guys were hammered on your forums and so on. So <laughs> it's no, I'm no professional. It's not gonna be a night i got no OCD or anything like that, so. <laughs> but without further ado, let me show you what sort of battery system I've got set up here. Taking the guts to show you what my 12 volt system is. Okay, like I said, it's nowhere near as good as what some of you guys are. So I'm a bit embarrassed to show this workmanship, but it does the job. So what does it consist of? As you can see, I've got the ply box that I built on the other side. It's got a latch that locks down and the 120 amp kick-ass battery sits inside that. I've got a Red Arc DC-DC 1225D, which is lithium compatible. The only issue is it's only 25 amps. I would have liked something around the 40 or 50 amp. So that I think is something I will sell in the near future 
when I get a lithium and update it for something that'll give about 40 amps. That Red Arc DC DC battery has got one thick 12 volt cable that runs from the starter battery that's fused near the starter battery with the 40 amp MIDI fuse. When I start the car, that will start charging the battery. When I turn the car off, that will st stop charging. Now, I don't have one of those smart ignition in my vehicle. So I don't need to worry about that. So it's just directly wired straight to that. And then that's earthed to a point to the car. So I can't remember exactly how I've done this, but I, I do remember that it came with no plugs on it. And I just made the joins, the cable joins, and joined them up and wired them to the battery. And then I've got fuses right near the battery as well. All the positives have all got fuses on them as well. I can't remember what. I think I used another 40 amp MIDI on this. I, I do have a rough wiring diagram done up when I did this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for it. And if I find it, I'll post it somewhere here, maybe just, just down there. I'll post the wind diagram roughly to show you how it's set up. So of course that charges while you're driving along. Now it does have an MPPT solar regulator in that red arc, but I don't use that. I used to, but I don't use it anymore because as you know, I like to use high voltage solar panels. Hence the Victron, and this is one of the components that I did upgrade approximately a year and a half, two years ago. I purchased this Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller 100 slash 50. The 100 volts, it stands for, it can handle up to 100 volts solar, of solar panels coming into the the bat the um the solar regulator and the 50 amps is what the maximum it'll output to your battery system okay so if you've got the solar panels that can produce it this will put out 50 amps the solar blanket i've got is a safari slash drifter 250 watt high voltage solar blanket it quite easily produces up to close to 17 amps uh, during the midday sun with a battery that's drained a bit. There is a fuse box. It's on the other side. Where's my finger? It's on, it's on the other side there. So I'll have to fold the seat forward shortly and show you that fuse box. And now I want to show you this. That is the shunt for my Enerdrive EPRO battery monitor as you can see so it's quite fancy and you can see i didn't skimp on where it's required you can see how thick the battery cables i used i probably went a little bit overboard in there but being a 12 volt system i didn't want to take any chances so i went real thick battery cables and now that's plugged into a battery monitor which can be moved around and it's located at the back of vehicle. So we'll go and show you that now. So that's the ePro battery monitor. So just at a glance, just looking at that, I can see that that battery has got 98% capacity left in it. And at the moment it's drawing just a tad over three amps because I've got the fridge running at the moment. You can go through this through the menu and it'll show, show, it'll show me the voltage of the battery It'll show me the capacity, uh, as you can see, it's got the capacity. And what I love about this is just a quick glance and I don't have to go through the menu or anything. And I can just look at that and I know it's 20, 98%, so it, it's, got, it's only used 2% of the battery. So since I've been out here this morning and I set up the vehicle, uh, I've only gone through 2% of the battery capacity. And, it's, and I've been out here for a while too. So I think that's, that's brilliant. And of course that's lithium compatible. So if I go for the, the battery, the Enerdrive battery without the Bluetooth monitoring system, 
built into it that Drifter are selling for a reduction in price to the one with the all the bells and whistles. This is the bells and whistles. I've got everything here that I need. Now the other component I failed to mention here before is this Ozcharge Pro 1200. So it's a 100% automatic battery charger. So it'll charge to 12 amps. Okay, this will put a maximum 12 amps into the battery. And it's a 240 volt charger. Now this is what I plug into in my garage. When the car's in the garage, I always plug into this. So it keeps the battery in tip top condition and keeps it at 100%. Because once it reaches 100%, It'll go through just like a float charge. So you've got your full charge, your absorbent, your bulk and your float charge. So it's basically a four stage charger. And that's been brilliant. I've been very happy with that. And that's, that's an Australian, Australian product. Okay, so Oz Charge is an Australian company. I don't know if the particular battery charger itself is made in Australia or China. I've got no idea where it's made. But all I know that Ozcharge is, is an Australian company. Okay. Now the only problem with that, it's not lithium compatible. So I will probably need to eventually update that to a lithium compatible 240 volt charger. Now last but not least, that's my fuse box. Now what I love about this fuse box is it's got the negatives connected to it as well. So it's got like a shunt in it as well. And then that negative goes through the main shunt for the, uh, the battery monitor so that it records everything that goes in and out. So that there has got 12 slots, so I can plug in 12. Now at the moment I'm only using two so one is for uh, some USB chargers out the front. So I don't think I've got the other ones plugged in at the moment. I've got them disconnected. But I used to have some USB charge ports at the back as well. But I've done away with them because I now use the Kickass Dual Zone Fridge Freezer. has got a cigarette lighter plug and two US, no, it's actually three USB ports. And I tend to use that uh, for charging, you know, your torch batteries, etc. So on. So that's it there. And that is a, uh, if I remember, uh, Blue Blue Sea. So I think it's called Blue Sea. So I went for the best that I could find. And it's the one that's commonly used in the marine industry. And I've been very happy with it. I haven't had any trouble with it. It's been brilliant. It uses a spade type fuses and I can go from 5 amp fuse right up to 30 amp fuse. So that's basically my 12 volt battery system that I built. Now bear in mind guys I, I built that approximately four years ago. It might even be five years the time travels and I've never had an issue with it. It's always worked and if something went wrong if it did at some stage, very easy to repair. I know there's the likes of Red Arc and so on, and they got their battery, you know, everything all built into one. But that's the thing. I don't. I don't want to go. I don't want to go that method. I don't want to go too technical. When I build this new system, and it's going to be very similar. I'm probably going to do away with the battery box and I want to move it to the back of the vehicle because the batteries, the lithiums are so much lighter, I want to move it away. Now these Pajeros have got an advantage where there's a secret cabinet underneath and the drifter drawers, if you order the specific drifter drawers for you guys out there who owns Pajeros, if you order the drifter drawers suitable for Pajero, they cut out the, at the base there, so when you pull your drawer system out, you got this huge cavity in there. And I notice a lot of folks there with Pajeros have been putting their dual battery system in that location. And that's what I'm going to do with mine, so that way it's going to be in, out of the way. But I need to get a lithium for, for now. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time, actually a very long time. 
but I thought there's no point doing all that if I'm going to upgrade the battery soon. So I'll wait till I get a lithium. Now I don't have the funds for a lithium, uh, but as soon as I do, I'll let you know uh, which one I purchase. Might even bring the camera with me or the store if I manage to get to a store to pick one up and have a talk to the guys and do a bit of a review and give you some of the reasons why I've chosen to go with that lithium. So of course budget's a factor as well. So I just don't have the budget now and to be honest I'm not too sure when I will have the budget to be able to get one of these lithiums. So we'll see. Hopefully maybe in the next six, seven months. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And hopefully this battery will last a lot longer till then. So I'm going to knock off on now because I noticed the battery is getting down low on me mic. So before it cuts out. So guys, thanks for watching. This is basically an introduction to the series that I'll be filming on the 12 volt system. I'll show you as I go along. I'll film any modifications I do, any updates I'll do. I'll bring the camera along and show you and show you that and why I've chosen that device. So hopefully, should make for good viewing. So till then, be kind, look after yourself, and cheers.